Happy Planner meets Mixed Media, Creative Katie. That's me, Karen Virgil. In this video, see how to create trackers or list stickers, use Julie Nunning dolls, and even more ways to use Dilutions paints in your planner. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So, in the last video, I jelly printed onto the stickers. And what I discovered after doing it was that if I was to do that in the future, I would cut these stickers into the amount of stickers that I may use on any given spread and then have the entire selection of sizes and shapes of stickers and use the same basic color scheme two, three colors, four colors. There may be different patterns, there may be different things, but they would all be there. So when I went to go and do a particular um, planner page, I would have all the varieties I needed and wouldn't have to stop to go and create more. So one of the things that, because I had the stickers sitting out as I was creating another page, and I used it to clean off my unused paint when I had been using my Dilutions paint. And I discovered that the Dilutions paint work extremely well on these stickers. They blend, and if I was to, like I am here, creating an entire array of the variety of stickers from scratch right before I'm planning, it is a very, very quick, easy way to get these stickers colored and ready to for a planner. It dries almost instantaneously, um, and the ease of which to do it is, is amazing. So you can see there, I've got circle stickers, I've got one by three stickers, I've got some transparent uh, return address ones, some transparent um, stickers, address stickers, as well as the white stickers. Someone had commented that they had spent a lot of time putting paint on stickers and then found that the stickers, somehow the adhesive was um, wrecked because of that. I have not had that experience. The stickers that I have are a multitude of sources. I've got Avery stickers. Some are really, really old. I've got um, dollar store stickers, and I've not had that problem. But I'm keeping it to fairly dry medium. I'm not getting them overly wet, so I don't. Know, I'm not sure if that was a problem or not. So. Right here you see me taking, I've got a XO, X heart stamp that I had picked up at Michael's and I'm just putting some of the darker paint on and just stamping onto the stickers. And you can add whatever extra details and interest that you want on any of your stickers after you put the base color. You can leave it at the base color or you can stamp designs from your stash, going through your stash and stamping. I'm stamping the word love all over this. When you see the final product where I use this, you're not going to be able to see that word at all. It just becomes a design feature. You can use black paint, you can use white paint. I think using silver or gold is a way here to really make it pop. The Dilutions paint work extremely well you know, going through a stencil. So again, I'm adding interest on that. And it's on all the different ones, the different sizes, and I'm going in with different colors at different places. And just having fun. Now all the stickers you see here in this color scheme, I don't use all that on this planner page, but it's nice to have the array available to you when you are planning. I'm kind of torn between doing it ahead and doing it right before because if you do it right before then you know exactly what theme and what where you're going 
If you do it ahead, you may or may not like it. So once those were all dry, I looked at my supplies and decided, okay, what am I going to do? And I grabbed out my Julie Nutting doll, which my plan was to grab some jelly prints that you see there and paper piece onto that doll and then use my stickers for other things. I also pulled out a bunch of my uh, starter ATCs that have background color. Now, one of the things that I discovered with my stickers was that I could make a tracker. And I discovered this quite by accident. I decided that I was going to take the stickers and punch holes in them. I had some circle stickers, but they were a little too big to make into bullet holes. Well, of course, that was very tedious to try to peel off the back of the paint. And then I saw the leftover piece and I thought, well, I can use that as a tracker or as a list sticker. And I'm just showing you kind of the mock-up that I made for last week's plan. Now when it comes to the stickers, if you don't have any stickers, measure and try to fit the stickers to how you're planning on using them. Are you going to make list stickers? Do you want it to go up and down, across, you know, or do you want it to go side to side? These return address translucent ones, transparent ones, actually fit right across. These ones fit here. These are one by threes. If you have stickers, make do with what you have. Use it up. It isn't a big deal to have to cut these at all. And here I have lots of these type of stickers, file folder label stickers. I'm going to have to cut them. And that's okay. So I'm figuring out what I want to do. And one of the things that I decided to do this week is track the amount of water that I drink. So on the top part, which is my to-do and kind of tracking and kind of maintenance kind of things, um, my appointments go there. That's kind of what all seems to go in that top uh, third of the page. So I'm just took a rough estimate and I'm cutting seven of these because I want one for each day of the week. And then I'm going to use my hole punch and punch holes in that. And I decided for tracking water, you're supposed to drink eight glasses of water. So I thought if I have four, I can go one, two, three, four, and I could do it that way and track the amount of water that I am drinking. So a hole punch works rather well with this. If you want to be precise, you can make a template and mark exactly where each of the punches is going to be. I'm not that particular. But if you are, that's what you can do. Do one that you like and then use that as a template or stick it on Mylar and use that. Now the hole punch, this dollar store hole punch, seems to work rather well for this. I did have trouble when I tried doing it through the transparent stickers. Some of the cuts weren't exactly, um, didn't cut all the way through. So, but that might be because it's a dollar store um, hole puncher. Now you see me not putting these straight, like half right across the top or right across. I'm kind of putting them on randomly. And by doing that, you're not going to notice if the hole punches aren't exactly straight as much, and you're not going to notice if something isn't perfectly aligned. It's a little trick I learned when I, uh, after years of doing bulletin boards. If you tried to make the letters straight and they weren't, everything was noticeable. If you didn't try, you went for the random look, it looked wonderful. So, just a little trick to use. So I'm just putting one of these tracker stickers on for all of these. Now I could have rounded it off. I could have uh, rounded off the edges. I could have cut it a little thinner. Again, personal taste. Part of what I want is the tracker, but part of what I want is also having the color on the page. I like 
turning to my planner and seeing this pop of color, this bright, colorful, patterned papers that I have. Sorry, I'm off camera here. I'm grabbing my quotes book and I decide I like this quote, do what you feel in your heart to be right for you to be criticized anyway. And that's been attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt. Last week I discovered that I really liked having the quote at the bottom of the page. There's a bit of a space there, white space. And so if I cut the quote that's pre-done and stick it onto these transparent stickers. Now what I will do, you see me kind of fumbling here and this is, is less than precise. And, and I was saying at this point in time, by the time I'm done, I'm going to know how to do this. And I do. What I would do... Um, next week because I definitely think I'm going to put a quote every week on the bottom of the page. I think I'm just going to use my glue stick and glue it down first and then all you have to do is put the transparent sticker on top if that's something that you want to do. So I've kind of troubleshot it for you and you can benefit from my um, knowledge. Or learn from my mistakes as the case may be. Now there was a heart at the bottom of the page and since the word heart was in my quote I left that heart there. You're going to see me come later and um, cut out a heart out of one of the stickers and stick it on top of the pink heart. I just wanted something to be a little bit more coordinated with the colors on the page. So the quotes, if I don't mind, if I just find them inspirational, that's something that I can pre-do. I can do a prep prep session, um, just like make the stickers or cutting jelly prints to size or punching holes for, um, for trackers or for list stickers. That could be something that I do. Cut out, this, cut out the quote and glue it to the bottom of the page then if I want to um, color it in any way, I have that option when I actually do the page. So I have to move my Julie Nutting doll over to the other side and I selected my uh, designer ATC card. I've been really quite fortunate that I've been able to find cards that match the backgrounds that I have. So, you know, I am using my stash of cards and backgrounds. Um, I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm making some list ones. And how I found I've been using my planner each week is in the second and third one. That's where I'll put... Um, Kind of to-do lists or brainstorm steps and details of my blog po upcoming blog posts or my YouTube videos. So those areas are kind of used as a brain dump or a brainstorming area. Now the one side is curved and I like that. The other side is straight so I can put that against the straight edge of the box. So instead of curving both, I deliberately left the straight edge. Now, if again, you want to be precise and you're particularly good with a paper cutter, go for that. I just think it's more, and if I do them ahead of time, that's what I might do. But as I'm doing it, you know, as I'm creating my planner page or spread here, I don't want to have to fuss and bring up every material and every tool that I own. When you stamp these holes with the or punch these holes, you can also spread them out to match how much room you want for each bullet. One of the things that I heard somebody complain about the stickers that were pre-made is sometimes they don't line up with the lines on the far left hand side or you may want to write more. So I could just put three holes and leave more space so I can write more detail. 
Now, yes, you see me covering up the light bulb again. I thought I loved that light bulb and I want it on every planner page. And it may come back. But I'm just finding right now it's, it's not where I'm at. So that's the danger of doing things ahead. When it comes to doing that particular spread, you may not be feeling that. Now the numbers over here, I still really like as, as I, as, and that goes for that, um, swirl pattern as well. It's an easy, quick, easy way to put color on there that, um, in a way I really like, and it kind of makes it more cohesive through my planner to have some things that are the same. So this is a insert that comes from Staples. It's from the Arc system, which has the same kind of punch or similar punch to the Happy Planner punch. And it is a list. And I thought, you know, when I put the list in there and I have the color, I don't like the having plain white paper or plain gray paper. And I thought, what would happen if I just colored this? It would add more solid color to my planner and I can still use it as a list and you know if I do it right when I have the paint out and I'm really using up leftover paint it's all good so this might be something that I will keep out and as I create my art journal pages I can put leftover paint on and then it'll find its way into some of my planner spreads. I will be um, putting a list of all the materials that I use in my um, planner videos in the description box. They are links to Amazon. And full disclosure, if you go through that link and you purchase products in Amazon, I get a small commission, which helps me buy products that I can then use in the videos and share with you. That's kind of the intent. It's not a lot. Uh, I've yet to get a check from them, but um, that's my thinking about it. It's just going to allow me to buy some new products that people are interested in. There, I'm just using up leftover paint onto some stickers, adding some more layers of color. Then I decide, and I probably won't do this on all of them. I was just curious. I bought some of the white, I think it's white linen, um, Dilutions paints, because I liked in some of the videos that how it looked when it was through a stencil and layered on. And I decided, I'm just going to add a little bit of white to this. It, it, seem to have gotten a little bit dark. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm applying this. This is a Ranger blending pad. And I've just put it, Velcroed it onto um, an old wooden spool. So I like how the white of the stenciled on paint matches the white that peeks through the um, trackers and the white that's on the page. And I'm going to attempt to put a little bit more white because my dilutions paints are not, they have not had a chance to cure. They're dry, but they're not cured. It will bleed through and you will lose some of the white. You see me later come back and do the other side. I have I had appointments to go to and so I went and dealt with that and um, it was a little bit whiter. Now, right now, that addition there, the note, uh, the list, note, notepad or whatever, clears the ATC. I change where I put the eight, end up putting the ATC, so it kind of overlaps, which I don't like so much. Live and learn. 
but again, I want you to benefit from my, from my mistakes. So I'm just grabbing a blue and a purple and just coloring in the circles, just so the, the circles of this stamped list match the rest of the planner spread. And I'm finding this very quick and easy to do. I can personalize each page. Um, I don't regret doing it. I could replace this with a long um, sticker that I've punched or deli print that I've punched. Jelly print that I've punched, sorry. But the stamp works perfectly well. I have it. I might as well use it. And just caution, when you're using, when you're activating any watercolor, crayon or pencil or ink tense block, be aware you don't want to put too much wet on there. You can get away with a little bit. The quality of the paper is fairly good. But too much water, it's going to buckle. I don't like that look. Now, after my appointment, of course, I'm coming back and I decide I'm going to test out this white and see if I can get it whiter. Does it matter? And I think in the end, it is, it is a little bit whiter not significantly so I I wouldn't wait and dig out everything again if I'm in the midst of planning I'm just gonna do it and get it done all in one session I'm trying to get myself to the point where I you know can be ahead of the game where I kind of plan several weeks ahead and I can be be a ahead with my planning. Kind of approaching that now. Just adding a special heart on the 6th. That's my niece's birthday. And I just want to mark it with some special recognition. So now that the quote ha has been dried, I adhered it with gel medium. I'm just going to outline the words and the ATC with my Stabilo All Pencil. And that just makes it stand out. It just bring, takes it from, oh nice, to, oh wow. And for those of you that are interested, the Stabilo All Pencil comes in other colors outside of black. I have a navy. I also have a white. There is brown. There is green as well. There may even be other colors that I'm not aware of. You can see how just outlining the card just makes it stand out that much more. My brain has too many tabs opened. So I'm all set to have this here. And I decided to use my Uniball White to put the numbers in. The paint got a little bit dark and I couldn't see the numbers anymore. I also went and put a list on a full sticker because I wanted more color on the page. I was finding that there wasn't quite enough. <clears throat> so there's my Julie Nutting doll and I stamped her onto a piece of dictionary paper. And I colored her hair and her arms using my intense blocks. You can use whatever. And my plan to stamp and do the dress, paper piecing with the jelly prints, I decide that I'm going to use the stickers. So I stamp it onto the stickers. 
thinking, let's see how this works. So I just stamp it out and I'm cutting it out. Now you'll notice that with the dictionary paper, I'm piecing it onto the dictionary paper. I will cut it out once everything is paper pieced on. And I find that way I can get rid of any um, imperfections. So peeling off, this is a transparent sticker and you can actually see the book paper through it which I kind of like. And here I'm showing how, you, how I have that line outside of it, but when I cut it, that disappears. So I'm going to stamp the boot, and I'm just trying to grab a sticker that fits and use up my bits and pieces. And I discovered that I really am enjoying using the sticker to paper piece on my Julie Nutting doll. They're easy to cut out, they're easy to attach, you don't have to mess around with gel medium or anything after the fact. So I think when I do use my Julie Nutting Dolls in my art journal, on an art journal page, I think what I might do is put color onto one of the full sheets or the bigger stickers, depending on how big of an area I need, and then I can just have her dress or her different parts of her attire using that that technique. I always find it interesting when you discover new things that you can use in all the different areas of our art. So here you see me starting to cut this out. And I'm trying to leave the black edge. Some people go over that and just kind of darken that with a felt pan uh, brush marker. I didn't. I outlined it with my mic micron pen, my black micron afterwards. And you can see I moved the ATC over. And I gel mediumed the girl down. Put some heart stickers on there that I cut out from the circle stickers and put some circle stickers and um, printed the word love on the sticker. I think using the Julie Nunning dolls on your planner page can is something that I'm go you're going to see me doing again. I really like them and I think, think this is an excellent use for them. And that makes me happy because it's not something I like my dolls, but I wasn't necessarily getting maximum usage out of them. So I'm just using double sided tape to, to adhere that. So now everything is going back into the planner, and here's this week's, and as you can see, it is a functional planner. It gets written up all over, and, you know, some people say, well, how can you, it's so pretty, why would you do that? That's what it's for. But I love having it sit here, and I love seeing the colors. Um, it just makes me happy. So I plan on writing on these. It writes really well with an ink pen, a black ink pen, just regular. I don't buy any special pen for that. I'm anxious to use my trackers for water. Off camera, I'm just going to start and fill in some of my appointments and things that I know that are happening in the top corner. So here you see the spread. And it's again, somewhat different. But I like that. Every page can be different, or every spread can be different, and that's great. I've got a few more close-ups of different components. I hope there's a piece of sticker there that doesn't belong. I, 
I hope that you are enjoying some of these ideas and that you're giving them a try. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy all the pre prefabbed, pre-made stickers and stamps. You can have more originality on your planner and use up your mixed media supplies. This took me about an hour to do, but I'm having fun with it and I have the time to dedicate. Please leave a comment, like, and share the video. Help me grow my channel. Thank you.